Thank you for listening to Lone Star Community Radio. This program was broadcasted and recorded live from the LSCR studios in downtown Conroe, Texas. Lone Star Community Radio is supported by listeners like you. Donate and sponsor today. For more information on getting involved with Lone Star Community Radio, contact us at lscrstudios at gmail.com or visit us online at www.irlonestar.com. Hey, everybody. Welcome to Texas Songwriters Alliance Audio Impact on Lone Star Community Radio. I'm your host, Alex Lozano, and we have a very, very special guest, a Grammy-nominated singer-songwriter, Bill Curd, and he's going to play a few songs. Hey, Alex, how you doing? I'm doing pretty good, buddy. Yeah, let's 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 qualify and say Grammy nominated nomination considered right. three times. So right, three times. Ah, uh, oh, well, it's nice to be here. Uh, thanks for the invite. Um, you want me to play? I'm just going to I'll play for you. Real yeah, fast, d- yeah, tell you know, let us know the name of well, the song. Well, this song, or... you know, I, this is a song that I always warm up on. Uh, when I'm doing acoustic stuff, okay, uh, it's not even mine. It's just uh, nobody knows it. But uh, right. uh, so I just warm up with it. That way, uh, sure, we get into the other stuff. Whatever so you want to do. All right, buddy. it's called These Days. Or Well, I keep on moving, moving on. Things are bound to be improving these days. One of these days. These days I sit on cornerstones, count the time and quarter tones to ten. Don't confront me with my failures. I had not forgotten them. You know, for somebody whose lungs were a little <laughs> messed up, you've got one of the most powerful voices. Uh, they're I mean, still, they're still healing. Thank you. They're still <laughs> healing. Geez. You know, I, uh, uh, we were. Uh, it's been feeling kind of. 
crummy and, and uh, for a couple of weeks and we were spending it in the house and I told my wife, I said, I think you better take me to the hospital. I think I'm dying. Oh my and uh, she got me to appear to uh, uh, Houston well, Methodist right. and uh, they told the doctor there, the cardiologist said, hey, look, two more hours, you wouldn't be here. <laughs> Good thing your wife got you here. So, wow. so uh, two blood clots, either side of the lungs, a shot in from my leg, hit the left side, split up, go into the right side, and you know. So wow. uh, I know eventually there's going to be a song about this. Oh, you know it. <laughs> <laughs> there will be. Yeah. Um, tell us. Uh, uh, tell us about uh, uh, this song. Next one coming up. Uh, this is the title song from my last album, the Anywhere album. That album was uh, South Bay Music Awards in Los Angeles, Album of the Year, uh, 2023, last September. It would be almost a year ago. Um, I went out to uh, perform at the awards show. In fact, this December I'm hosting that awards show. I'm not nominated this year, but that's fine. I still have Can't wait to talk about that. That's yeah. going to be very I interesting. I still have the best players uh, in L.A. playing for me. So, um, Yeah, so this is the title song. Um, just as a background, so everybody knows, because I know people are going to watch this in here and say, what is he doing? Um, uh, I almost lost my hand back in 2016. Uh, so these last three fingers don't work in key to shake. Uh, right. So I play with one finger. Right. Uh, kind of open tuning. Um, almost open tuning, but not quite. It's, right. it's my, own, my own way to do it. It took me two years to uh, to learn how to play this way. And it's not perfect, but it works. I've done, you know, four, four albums since then, and... Uh, uh, they usually have a band behind me, so this is kind of interesting. Yeah, this is kind of kind of interesting. So this song called Anywhere. Oh, saw the way you touch me, smile, and I can't get enough.
My acoustic skills are a little rough today. Yeah, but that voice of yours, Jesus, just pushes me back, man. I'm like, thanks. You know, you don't. <laughs> I appreciate that. I appreciate that. Such a powerful voice. I mean, I know guys half your age that can't even do that. And then all the stuff you've been through. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Geez, I know. Wow. I, I, I tell everybody, you know, I, I, I'm 65. Uh, I'll be 66 in January. I don't feel it. Well, I felt it in June. You don't act <laughs> like it. You don't act like it. There's I don't act. I don't feel it, really. You know, You're a Toys R Us kid uh, just like me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But, uh, um, I, uh, I tell the young guys, I say, look, if you're going to be at this for a long time, don't expect to be famous, you know. Wow. And, and uh, all my friends are famous, but I'm not, and I didn't expect to be, and I don't care. Uh, you just play, you know. And it's got me through 65 years. So uh, I know guys that uh, were way better than I could ever want to be. They're dead now. So right, <laughs> right, yeah. I mean, something, so, yeah, yeah. So. Uh, let me see. Well, um, you know, you're, you're, to me, I feel all your experience, you're battle-tested, you know. Yeah, yeah, I call it seasoned, but battle-testing is a good one. <laughs> so um, I'm trying to think of what else I can play here. Um don't want to do this one right now. I could. I'll do this one. This is a, a, a song I wrote. Uh, this song actually was uh, considered for a Grammy nomination in uh, 2019 for uh, Best uh, America, best Adult Contemporary Song. Um, a song I wrote. Uh, it, it's, it's for anybody who had a relationship that, that they got out of because they had to. You know, but but the years pass, the love is still there, even though you're miles apart and you both mm. have your own families. It's a, mm. it's a song about regret, mm. and it's a song called Neither One of Us. Um, I'll try to play it. I like playing it with a band, but uh, we'll try and do it this way.
How's that? That's a beautiful song. Thank you. Appreciate that. And I know it's weird because I've never heard you go acoustic before because I'm so used to your electric bands. <laughs> I'm not bands used to and, doing acoustic. Right, right. I'm right, used to having you? those guys on the screen there behind me, and it's like uh, uh, it's new for me. Um, but uh, well, you brought it, man. You have such a powerful voice. It's uh, almost like you could go a cappella. Uh, thanks. I hope I drowned out the the, the, the guitar. <laughs> <a little> bit. <laughs> Hey, we're here with Bill Curd. He's going to play a few more songs for us. Be sure to check out Bill Curd on all streaming uh, platforms. He's uh, going to do a few more songs for us, and uh, uh, here we go. We're going to listen. We're going to listen to a few more. So. Well, excuse me. We're going to listen to a few more songs. My bad. <laughs> the, the lungs, the lungs get kind of tired, you know, this early. So uh, it's only been a couple months, but and I apologize for that. But I really appreciate being here and being able to play when I did. Yeah, so. We appre this, appreciate you being here. The song that he's going to spin up now. Um, there's a good story behind it. Uh, back in, in the 1980s, the late 80s, there was a guy, was still a guy, um, he's still around, uh, named Glenn Burtnick. And uh, he uh, ended up actually playing with Styx for about eight or nine years. Uh, he was with Styx. But he had an album out, uh, I think in 1986, called Heroes and Zeros. And uh, I was a big fan of his back then. And uh, he had a song in there called Walls Came Down. And I always told myself, look, if I ever have my own studio, I have the power to do it and I have the money to do it, I'm going to redo that song. So I was thinking around um, on Facebook. Uh, it was about two, three years ago. Uh, so I'm going to look up Glenn Burtnick. So I looked up Glenn Burtnick. I found out that all my friends uh, all know him. You know, uh, August Zadra from Dennis DeYoung's band, uh, uh, the Sarza, everybody knows. He, he knows everybody. So I reached out to him and said, hey, Glenn, you know, we know all the same people. I, uh, I've always liked Walls Came Down. I, I, I know I don't have to ask you. I can just do it and pay for, you know, pay for the rights. Uh, but I'd like your blessing. I'd like to put that song on my next album. Uh, I didn't hear from him for a few days. He got back to me and says, I didn't know anybody even remembered that song. He says, go at it. So it took me a year to finish that damn song. And... Um, uh, I finished it and sent the mix to him, and, and I thought he's gonna hate it because it's it's a little more rocked out, it's a little louder. Uh, I got a, a message in in Facebook from him, uh, opened it up and said, "I'm flattered." He said, "I love it," um, and so goes the song. It's a it's it's probably one of the best mixes I've done in a long time, but it's an awesome song. It's called "Walls Came Down," so, and I think he's gonna spin that up. Sounds great.
So this next song that, that he's going to spin up is uh, uh, a song that um, is called Down to the River. And um, it's, uh, I wrote it with my, my, my Grammy partner, uh, Andy Zuckerman, out in California. Um, it's a, a song about, a, kind of a, a swamp song, about uh, uh, like an 1800s, mid-1800s preacher that, that goes through all the towns and, and grabs people and wants to dunk them in the nearest river. To baptize. Their sins, baptize them and stuff like that. So... Um, <laughs> Uh, I wrote the song that way, and, and we worked on it. And uh, uh, the mix that, uh, that he's going to spin up is uh, ready. We're going to send it out to uh, Howie Weinberg for uh, mastering. Um, it's a good mix, and it's not even mastered. That's how good the mix is. That Andy did it, but it's called "Down to the River." Um, great song. Uh, it has uh, Robin McCauley from Michael Schenker Band and. Uh, uh, Survivor, he sang with Survivor for a while. Rob McCauley is singing some backup vocals on there with me, uh, as is uh, August Zadra from Dennis DeYoung's band, singing some backup vocals on it. So uh, uh, here goes the song.
So I was walking through Walgreens one day, and I uh, forget what I was buying, but um, this is little, like, three-year-old kid. He's walking down the aisle, not doing anything, didn't touch anything, just walking down the aisle. And his mother came racing around the aisle in a shopping cart, grabbed him by the arm, picked him up, and slammed him in the shopping cart and yelled at him. And, and I looked at her, and I just shook my head, and I didn't say anything. Um, I should have, but I didn't say anything. I walked away. Uh, I got home, and my wife and I were eating dinner uh, the same night. Uh, we saw uh, a, uh, it was on the news. We, we always watch the news when we eat dinner. We saw a, a section about a woman who was caught, uh, one of her kids got away. Uh, they had been chained up in the closet. She had been. She had them chained up in a closet. They'd been malnourished and abused. And uh, uh, one of the kids managed to break out of the door and get out of the house and get help. Uh, I uh, those two things. The Walgreens episode, episode or the issue that I ran into at Walgreens, and then this this thing on uh, on the news just hit me. I said I have to write a song about this. Like a ton of bricks. Yeah. And it hit me like a ton of bricks. And the the lyrics on it, I, I get a lot of email on this song. Um, uh, the lyrics are, are just probably the most powerful lyrics that I've written in my mind because they tell a story that people just... Uh, I have one woman uh, email me, said so she cried the whole time she listened to this song. Um, it's, it's what I think that a child uh, going through that would have going through their mind. Um, and uh, I wrote it that way. And uh, the song is, is, like I said, it's very powerful. It's very strong. The lyrics are, are, are very upsetting. Um, but I had to do it. Um, I just had to do it. And, and I... I, I keep thinking that there's got to be a way I can use the song to be, bring awareness to, to child abuse, to somehow get out there with it and bring awareness to child abuse because there's a lot of children that are, are living the life of, that, of those lyrics that I wrote. Um, wow. And, and, and nobody's helping them. So um, the song's called Sticks and Stones.
Enthusiast of Conroe, FM 104.5 and 106.1 Lone Star Community Radio invites you to shift into gear every Monday from 1 to 2 with Cruising Car Club Talk with Robert and Randy for news on all things automotive in the greater Houston Conroe area. Can't make a live show? We've got you covered. You can find all of our uncut content, including full episodes on Spotify, iTunes, Play Store, YouTube, Facebook, and IRLoneStar.com. Again, that's Mondays 1 to 2, Cruising Car Club Talk with Robert and Randy. See you there. Welcome back, everybody, to Texas Songwriters Alliance Audio Impact Live on Lone Star Community Radio. I'm your host, Alex Lozano, and we have our special music guest, uh, Bill Kurd, a fantastic uh, singer-songwriter. Bill, how have you been? Uh, I know, so, uh, you know, tell us what's been going on. I'm fine. You know, uh, I'm fine now. Um, Yeah. as you know, and a lot of my friends and fans know, uh, back on June 6th, I had a, a, a double pulmonary uh, embolism, uh, two massive blood clots on either side of the lung, and uh, it almost killed me. I'm still recovering. That's why you only heard me sing, you know, three songs today. Um, doing better, uh, much better. Uh, they found, uh, you know, when they, when you go through that kind of stuff, they take it, and, and the doctors always want to say, well, we're going to do a deep dive we're going to take your blood and do the deepest dive, go down the wormhole with your blood and find out what caused it. Well, they did. Uh, uh, they found uh, it's a really, really long, uh, long name, uh, but it's a very rare uh, uh, an- uh, autoimmune blood disease where uh, the uh, blood attacks itself thinking that it's sick. Uh, it thickens the blood. Wow, uh, which causes blood clots, and it's very, very, uh, uh, extremely uh, hard on uh, short-term memory. So uh, I'm on blood thinners, you know, to to try to to maintain. You know, there's no cure for it, so it's. Just well, I'm, I know one thing: it hasn't affected your voice <laughs> and the power of your voice. And, well, thanks, uh, and, you know, and knock on wood. <laughs> this is the, actually besides doing a couple of tracks in the studio uh, last week. This is the first time I've actually gone out. And just belted out a few, so it felt good. You're good um, at belting them out, man. Yeah. Other than that, we're fine. You know, um, uh, streaming kind of kind of messed the business up 30 years ago. So right. uh, all us old guys uh, that used to walk out to the mailbox to get uh, royalty checks in our underwear, um, we don't get that anymore. Uh, so a lot of us have to hold down day jobs. Right on. Yeah, you know, got to do what you have to do. Make things. You know, make things work, but uh, Bill, I have a, a few questions sure. I wanted to ask you about. You know, because sure. I know you've had a long, distinguished music career, and it's not your first rodeo. Um, one of the questions I always like to ask the artist is, "When did you first start playing guitar?" That would have been um, my senior year of high school. Um, now, mind you, I graduated from high school in 1977, so, um, and I was never really good. I was adequate, you know. Just you know, adequate. I hate to interrupt, but I always 
remember 1977 when one of the greatest singer performers in the world died, Elvis. So yeah. I don't know, it just popped into my head. Yeah, Sorry I know. About anyway. yeah. But um, I was a fan of his. Yeah. Um, I, I never really was, was really, really good. Um, I, uh, I was adequate. And then uh, um, in and out of music, you know, years of, of uh, baseball music, baseball music, you know, college baseball music, semi-pro baseball music, you know, back and forth. Um, and then um, when I got married, when Grace and I got married, um, I got back into original music. Uh, then I had the accident at the house in 2016. I almost lost my hand. And that was kind of a blessing in disguise. Um, because of the, the injury, the nerve damage, uh, and the, the MRSA staph infection that developed inside the hand, I lost all the nerves from these two fingers. You see they shake and then So this, now you're just playing muscle memory. Uh, no, I'm playing yeah. with one finger. You, you, you see me play. I, yeah. I took all my guitars and, and found a, a, a kind of a, 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 an offset way of open tuning, not, not totally open tuned. Uh, and I taught myself to play with one finger. It took me two years to perfect that, and I'm a better guitar player than I ever was, you know, 40, 40 years ago. So, uh, in fact, I'll come off stage and people will look at me and they'll say, what are you, what are you doing? What are you doing? Right. <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> I tell them the whole story, and they go, wow. But Who were some of your major musical influences, the big ones? The biggest, oh, the biggest I tell this to everybody, and, and I'll say it to the day I die, the biggest influence in my music career, the, the, the sole reason that I, I got into music in the first place wasn't the Beatles, wasn't Led Zeppelin, it wasn't you know those bands. It was Stevie Marriott from Humble Pie. He was my, uh, I idolized that guy. Um, I remember those guys. I, I never had that kind of set, that, those kind of pipes, but he was just, uh, uh, he was the reason that I got into music. The main reason I got into music, um, there, there, uh, and along the way, you know, you run into the artists that you like, and you say, well, that, that's an influence, and maybe, maybe not. But I was never a big Beatles fan. I was never a big Rolling Stones fan. I was never a big Zeppelin fan. Uh, but I had every Humble Pie album that was out, um, uh, and uh, Stevie Marriott. He's the reason I got into music. Yeah. Anybody music. else besides him, player well, or other, even, other singers that you really, really even admire? now, you know, there's there's uh, 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 singers that I really enjoy listening to that that are are not household. Than David Cook, I love listening to David Cook. Okay. Um, he's great. Yeah. Um, not necessarily artists that are famous, but nevertheless good. Well, he's popular. I mean, yeah. you know, he's making a lot of money. Um, <laughs> uh, another person, I I love her voice. Uh, She's got a voice that won't quit. Is Kelly Clarkson? I oh, mean, wow! Her, uh, it, she's not an influence, but but if I if I say if you said, hey, is there somebody you'd want to meet? Yeah, I'd like to meet Kelly Clarkson. And I think she's a cool. great talk show host. I've checked her show. Yeah, out. Yeah, I've been watching her show a little bit. Yeah, and, I like uh, it. But but what a voice! You yeah, know? Uh, I'm not uh, American Idol. I think she won the first one or something. The, like yeah, that. American Idol. Um, but yeah, it, you know, there's artists out there that, that I really really enjoy. Uh, uh, listening to uh, Buck Cherry, I love listening to Buck Cherry. They, they were just go, in town. Didn't get to go see him. Uh, John Waite is probably one of my all-time favorites. From the Babies. Yeah, oh, yeah. Wow. As a matter of fact, uh, uh, the guy who who has his spot now, John Bisaha, uh, just played on uh, Let It Rain, uh, uh, the the new version of Let It Rain. John Bisaha from the Babies just played bass tracks on that, mm. and then the new drum tracks on Let It Rain. Uh, not the version that that we have here, but the version, the new version of Let It Rain has uh, David Buckner from Papa Roach on drums, John Bisaha from the Babies on bass, and they will have those guys, huh? I said I know those guys. Yeah, and Robert Sarzo on lead guitar. So that'll be a, a monster song. Um, but yeah, I mean, you know, I'll listen to anybody. Uh, who do I want to meet? Very few. Uh, who influenced me? Uh, the biggest one was Stevie Marriott. Um, you know, um, that's, that's, you know. I, I, um, tell us a little bit about your musical, your musical music, your, the way you feel about your own well, music. Because you're a very diverse singer-songwriter. You can, your, your songs, a lot of songs sound alike just because 
you hear the person's voice. It's like as soon as Brad Delp, the late great singer of Boston, mm -hmm. one of the greatest vocalists ever, mm -hmm. you know it's Boston. You know, and mm -hmm. uh, you definitely have your own unique style. So I I uh, um, I have uh, been asked that so many times. What kind of music do you play? You know, I don't know. It you know I. Uh, it feels like straight ahead rock and it's, roll it's, in your face. It's it's not so much in your face rock and roll. It's it's I would call it kind of album album rock, uh, adult rock, album rock. Um, when I first came to Texas here 13, 14 years ago, it was like you either had to be and it's still that way. You either had to be a, a heavy metal, punk, or country, or a tribute band, and um, that's that's pretty much how it still is. Um, so I, I really don't have a niche here There's the, to describe my music. It, it's nowhere near any of those. Um, and it's nowhere, uh, it's, it's nowhere near, you know, soft rock. It's nowhere near country. It's just, it's just, uh, uh, it's a style that, that I have pretty much written myself into. And I don't know, um, Nobody here in Houston, uh, but I don't know a lot of bands that are out there right now that are popular that you hear on the radio or you hear on YouTube. I don't know that there's anybody out there playing my style, and I don't know if they'd want to. Hmm. You know, but, uh, it's like a fingerprint. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a, it's my niche. Uh, I, I came up with it. I, you know, I don't know. Is uh, is there? Anything you can think of that your fans would like to know about you that might not know about you, you know? Some... Well, um, I have what I have on Facebook, like close to three thousand followers, but on TikTok I have twelve thousand seven hundred followers. Um, uh, one thing a, a lot of people don't know, um, but they because they think that that music is a big glamorous. Uh, uh, Big glamour scene to get into, party party, play play party party. You know um, what a lot of people don't know about me is when I'm done playing, when I get off stage, I want a Dr Pepper and a pepperoni pizza. You know I could care less about anything else. And another thing that people really don't know is that I'm very, very happily married, have a structured life, um, and and a very cool wife. Thank you. I've she's, had the pleasure of meeting her. She's, and, she's awesome. She's and I've had the privilege of being over at your house, seeing you uh, do your thing. You yeah, know, so. and, and 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 she lets me, which is kind of cool. Um, uh, but you know, when when you think of uh, people that do what we do, they don't know much about your your personal life. Right, right. Uh, right. They just see you on a stage. They hear your music. Either they hear it on the internet. They hear it on the radio. Um, uh, they buy it, they download it, it's on Apple Music, Pandora, you know, wherever it is, right. they're listening to it, and they think, uh, you know, here's this this guy, you know, he's wild, playing rock and roll music. It's not that way. Right. Um, not for me. So so what a lot of people don't know is that I have a very structured home life. Yeah. Uh, I love it. I uh, wouldn't trade it for anything. And I think you have a, a brand new addition to the family. There you have we, like a hundred pound baby... <laughs> Piper. Tell, tell us about that, yeah. Piper, she's amazing. Um, Great Dane, right? Uh, yeah, our friends, Lord. Our friends. Uh, it was the third time they've had a litter, and they had ten, ten of them. And um, two died, so they had eight left, and they had the runt, it was Piper. And, and uh, so they said, well, this would be great for Billy and Grace. Let's give, her, give them the runt. So, uh, it's a pretty big runt. Yeah, they gave her to us, and uh, she's amazing. I, I, I... I've heard stories about what they call them the gentle giants, or what great yeah. dogs they are. Yeah. She's amazing. Um, um, Big giant lap dogs. She just turned. Yeah, she yeah, she sleeps on my lap. She <laughs> she just turned six months old and she's right at eighty pounds. Oh Jesus! Her father is two hundred and eighty pounds. Oh, she'll be one hundred and fifty <clears throat> minimum. No, I don't think so. I, she's gonna be around one hundred and thirty, one hundred and thirty-five pounds. That's, That's still pretty big. That's for big dog. But uh, yeah, she's great. Um, uh, great addition, uh, and I didn't think my wife was gonna let me keep her. Um, I said, "Give me a month, give me a month, give me one month," and, and she's still here. She she absolutely loves her. So, yeah, well, well, everybody. Um, before we go, I would like to uh, thank Bill for coming to the studio. It's been amazing, my friend. Thank you um, very much. 
you're such a fantastic artist, the way you treat everybody, the way you're always willing to collaborate and and, and help on the promotional end. Uh, what a lot of people don't know about Bill, he used to run a big time serious, uh, what was the name of the venue? that you Normandy Casino, Normandy Casino Showroom in Los Angeles. Yeah, yeah. and uh, so he's real familiar with production and producing and... And uh, you know, as far Writers. as far as I'm, yeah, and as far as I'm concerned, um, I consider you as a mentor, and I can't wait to learn more from you. And oh. um, I'm hoping we get to work together on a few of the ideas with the Texas Songwriters Alliance and and we what will. we want to do. And um, man, I really, really do appreciate it. I, I thank you, uh, thank Dick, uh, thank you. Uh, I'd like to acknowledge, you know, because I know she's gonna listen to my wife Grace. It's no, just, no. Without shout her, outs, big time. Yeah, without her, I wouldn't be alive today, and I wouldn't be able to do the things that I do. And she's my biggest fan. And what is her name again? Grace. 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 I have Grace. four, four, I have three grown daughters. They're all in their forties, and uh, I have a fifth grandchild on the way. So, um, what, are yeah. the, what are the names of your daughters? Uh, she generally is 42, 43, and she's in uh, <clears throat> the Air Force. I can't tell anybody what she does. Uh, you have to kill us. Yeah, she, she'll <laughs> kill me. Uh, <laughs> And then we have uh, uh, my daughter from my first marriage, Katie. She's uh, 42, and she's in San Diego, California. And our youngest daughter, Jan, is 40, and she's in Garden Grove, California. So uh, uh, I got, you know, when I married Grace, we've been married 26 years now, as of uh, two weeks ago, 26 years. And um, I inherited her daughter. She inherited mine, and uh, it's been a, it's been a, a real, real neat ride. So. Yeah, I can I can tell how she when she looks at you like that's my rock star. Yeah, she's she's kinda, awesome kind of thing. Awesome. Um, God, I like I really thank you for this. This this has been great. It's been fun. So. No, well, without Dick, this show doesn't happen. Um, I want to tell our listeners also that uh, Lone Star Community Radio is a nonprofit. So let everybody know. Anybody send our way, you know, to this is the way we keep the station running. Yeah, uh, it's yeah. it's. It's very important to support uh, the local music here, locally, regionally, all, all over the place. Um, so we're going to go ahead and wrap this show up. Uh, I'm your host, uh, Alex Lozano. And Bill, once again, thank you so much. Thank you very for much. For being on this thing. Uh, well, it's thank, an honor. Um, honor. Uh, Dick for doing what he does for Lone Star Community yeah. Radio, uh, Jay Lamb's Remy, uh, Rockstar, uh, Rock Rage Radio, yes. uh, Kevin Music News. I'd like to thank all the people that support me. My girl, Kimberly Offord. Um, I've, I've lucked out and found a, a world-class girl who's willing to put up with me, and I appreciate that, and my mom. And um, Thank you so much, Bill. And, oh, thank uh, do, you. Do you have any shows coming up? I don't. <clears throat> I, I don't. <clears throat> Breaking in a, a couple of new guys. They're kind of reformed. Okay. Um, but uh, I can let my fellow TSA members know I'm back. That's right. Oh, and also, too, he's he's part of my advisory board for the Texas Songwriters Alliance. Once again, I can't thank you enough, Oh, Bill. thank you so much. I'm having such a good time with this, and um, we'll see you real soon, I hope. It's been an honor. You All right. Thanks. Thanks, Alex. All right, y'all take care. All right, take care. Welcome to Texas Songwriters Alliance Audio Impact. I'm your host, Alex Lozano, and this is a brand new segment that I've put together uh, called Recommended Shows uh, that are going around uh, today, uh, Thursday, and this weekend. I want to first start off um, Saturday the 10th at the 19th hole. Very uh, local favorites, uh, Downfall 2020, uh, Kid Karmic, uh, Torrid Complex, Secret of Boris, and our good friends, and they've been here before, Aviate and... Uh, You'll be hearing a lot of uh, those guys here real soon. Also, um, this Saturday, uh, Pacific Yard House. No, excuse me. Uh, that's tomorrow night at Pacific Yard House. There's a Cars Tribute Band. And also, um, Thursday, Chad Pratter and the Ragamuffins. A very famous uh, singer, songwriter, uh, who also does comedy. Um, they're also at Dan Electro's um, Thursday night, uh, tonight, actually, uh, as a Doors tribute band. Um, and then I don't want to forget this, too. 
uh, starting tonight is the Conroe Concert Series. It's 80s night where they're playing all of the hits. Uh, also Sunday, I want to let everybody know about the Houston Songwriter Association meeting at Kojak's. Um, also, um, if you're a fan of uh, Fred Durst, this Sunday, uh, I might be going to check out Limp Biscuit at the uh, Cynthia Woods Mitchell Pavilion. Um, I don't want to forget to let you know every Monday, my buddy Paco Perez, uh, lead singer of the Heavy Honeys, and Travis Bryant have their Monday residency at the Corner Pub here in downtown Conroe. And one last thing I want to tell you guys about uh, this Sunday at the Pub's Founding uh, off the Southwest Freeway from 4 p.m. till 10, my real good friend, Joe Kane, uh, we're having a benefit for him, a bunch of great bands uh, this Sunday from uh, 4 to 10. That's about, that's it, guys, and we really uh, appreciate you guys tuning in um, to Audio Impact on Lone Star Community Radio. Thank you. <laughs>